ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Your Friday is here. We've made it. Welcome in. It's Friday, April 21st. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 94.1 in AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan, and for the next hour, you've got an opportunity to be a part of the program. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. This is the place to talk martial sports and beyond, and we got a lot to get into today. Uh, let's start with what's happening right now. Kennedy Center baseball action Taking place, Georgia Southern taking on the Thundering Herd. And right now, uh, Marshall, top of the seventh, is down 15-3. to Georgia Southern scored one run in the first, eight in the second, one in the fourth, two in the fifth, three in the sixth. Thundering Herd managed to get a run in in the second and two runs across in the third, and that's it for the Thundering Herd. There were, right now, there are 15 runs off of 15 hits. Thundering Herd has six hits, three runs in. So not a good day for the Thundering Herd. We'll try to keep you updated on that one. It was a good day for Marshall Softball, the Thundering Herd entertaining James Madison earlier today, and the Thundering Herd getting the victory 10-2. to So softball is back at it. Uh, really no, um, no lingering um Let's just say no hangover from Alabama as the Thundering Herd back on the winning side with a 10-2 victory over James Madison. Sidney Nestor with the win for the Thundering Herd. We've got a lot of action going on this weekend. Not only will softball and baseball be in action, you've got the spring game coming up. We'll talk more about that later Are you excited for it? The weather, we're crossing our fingers that everything's going to hold right now. We are crossing our fingers that everything is going to be fine weather-wise on Saturday. It's a little overcast right now if you're listening to this show live. Is there going to be rain tonight? Is that going to rain on the cornhole activities going on later tonight at Jones C. Edwards Stadium? Let's hope not. Let's hope that everything is fine and we're going to have a dry game tomorrow. But we'll get into that with you later on. Uh, I want to talk a little basketball with you just for a moment. Uh, Yesterday on Twitter, Marshall basketball player on the women's team, Samantha LaFon. She has entered the transfer portal according to her social media. She appeared in every game last season coming off the bench. And uh, it looks like, um, unless I've missed someone, this is the first transfer since Kim Stevens took over as the head coach at Marshall University. Again, I wouldn't read too much into this. Of course, you have a new coach come in. So there are going to be players that maybe don't want to be there with the new coach. There are going to be some players that are excited to welcome in the new coach and be a part of whatever that coach is wanting to build. So I wouldn't read too much into this. If we see a lot of defections, we see a lot of transfer portal activity, just remember, as I always tell you, the transfer portal giveth, the transfer portal taketh away. And I'm sure that the, you're going to see a, a team that's going to reflect the philosophies of Kim Stevens. And that's not to say that uh, Samantha LaFon uh, couldn't be a part of that. It's just she's made the decision to enter herself into the transfer portal. So um, good luck to her. I had some interactions with her uh, on the uh, on the chance of, uh, you know, now and then, pressers and events like that. Yeah, she was really – Uh, Really nice to talk to. So uh, I wish her well as uh, she looks to uh, continue her basketball journey elsewhere from the Thundering Herd. So uh, we've got football to get into with uh, spring practice wrapping up. We're going to talk about that. Uh, There's some other things that are happening that I want to get into with you first. The, The NCAA Playing Rules Oversight Panel has approved some changes. So I want to really get into that with you. We're going to get your text in about this, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Uh, I've already got a few people on Twitter that have responded to uh, the posting I made earlier about this. Uh, it seems that the NCAA is going to uh, change a few clock rules. You're going to see the clock run after first downs in all divisions except Division Three. 
And the only time that the clock is not going to continue to run after a first down, that's going to be in the uh, last two minutes of the uh, first half and second half. We'll get into more of these rule changes with you in a minute, but I want to get your comments in on it. So get the number ready in your phone book. Program it in however you need to remember it. It's 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Some interesting rule changes here for the NCAA. Uh, This won't go into effect until the 23-24 academic year. So it's not like this is just going to change right overnight. There's going to be a transition year before this happens. So you got to get used to this new rule next year. I'll tell you right now. Some of you are going to disagree. If this improves the game flow, I'm for it. If this improves the game flow, I'm for it. So we'll get into those rule changes. We'll talk Marshall football as well as the Thundering Herd getting set for the spring game coming up tomorrow, 4 o'clock at Jones C. Edwards Stadium. So we'll do all of that when we continue. Don't forget, you can find me on Twitter as well, at Paul Swan. So you've got the text line. You've got social media. You know how to get a hold of me. We'll do it when we continue on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're back on your Friday edition of The Drive here at ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Text line is 304-396-TALK-304-396-8255. If you're a little more social and you want to join me on Twitter, it's at Paul Swan. So earlier today, the news came out that the NCAA is set to approve rule changes, and we're going to see the clock run. After first downs in all divisions, except for Division Three, the clock will stop after first downs during the final two minutes of each half. So it's not exactly the NFL we're talking about here. But one of the things that maybe separated college football from the National Football League is the fact that the clock stopped. So now you get that first down, the clock doesn't stop. That's going to be interesting. We've got a year to transition into this. What is going to happen? Uh, I've already had some people that were a little angry about these rules. One tweeter said, don't like that. Another person on Twitter said, not a good decision. You have a slow chain crew or refs taking their time spotting the ball. Marshall has experienced both. And then a delay of game penalty for something not at the fault of the team. You have a 30-yard gain or more, and it takes time to set the chain. Total BS. Also from Twitter, this is not what slows plays. Do something about those stinking media timeouts after every other play and change a possession with the uh, angry emoji, by the way. That's the benefit of texting. You can tell me with an emoji how you really feel. So uh, that's what uh, some initial responses are to this story. So what's going to happen here is it's going to change for the 23-24 academic year. We got it. We got a year. And according to the NCAA, this uh, change aims to control game flow and encourage consistent game management. And we're not just talking about the clock here. Yeah, they're changing the 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 flow of the game. They want to in include some changes with timeouts, penalties, instant replay. Uh, They're trying to reduce the number of plays. It's a modest reduction. They're talking about maybe 7 to 10. Um, Also, there is going to be a a stop to consecutive team timeouts. So you can't take back-to-back timeouts. There's no consecutive timeouts. You can take that now. And uh, penalties are also, at the end of quarters, are going to carry over. So if there is a penalty at the end of the uh, first period, it's going to carry over to the second. If there's a penalty at the end of the second period, it's going to carry over to the third. So there's going to be some carryover here. Not going to have uh, untimed plays. Also, there will be options for teams to use instant replay in games without a replay booth official. Uh, there was a pilot program in Division Two that was pretty successful, according to the NCAA. Um, also, there's going to be some clarification on guidelines for second-half warm-up activities and drones during games. So this applies more to, I would say, the home institution. 
drone usage is going to be regulated a little bit more. You don't want drones flying over the field when uh, players are on the field, right? At least that became an issue, it seems. So there's going to be a, a little bit more of a clarification on some of these things. But the big one here is the management of the clocks. So the early impression I'm getting from people is you, you don't like this. This is not a rule change that you like. Why don't you like it? I need to know. What is it about this rule change that has kind of aggravated you a little bit? 304-396-TALK is our text line. 304-396-8255 is our text line to be a part of today's edition of the show here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Now, I have never made a secret about this. I prefer the NFL. I like NFL a little bit better than I like college football. I just like the flow of the game. It flows more for me. And, and no, there's television in that too. Trust me, I know there's a, a lot of television issues here. Uh, the one thing I think I like about baseball is the fact that you go to the timeout after a certain part of the game flips. So, yeah, three outs, timeout. Next team up, three outs, timeout. Uh, you know, when you have pitching changes and a couple other things, you know, there might be a, a short pause here. And so far, I'm actually on board with the speeding up of the games. I know television networks might not like that come playoff time, postseason, because, you know, you want more because you want to sell more advertising. So I don't know what the healthy balance is going to be here with timeouts. You might have a, adjusted inventory as far as timeouts are concerned with television. What's going to be the the healthy balance here? You know, I don't think this is going to really speed the game up. It might create a little bit more flow, but I don't know if it's going to drastically speed up the game. And maybe it will. Maybe a team that's slow and methodical, maybe they continue to do what they do, or maybe they change it up a little bit. I mean, if you're a fast-paced team, this might not necessarily impact you. And I'm sure there are going to be adjustments and tweaks made to this, obviously. You're not just going to have this be a static rule. You know, you're going to study it. You're going to analyze it and see what kind of impact it has on the game of football. At the same time, I'm for anything that creates a little bit more flow. And I'm going to go back to you know, one of the tweets I got a few minutes ago about what actually slows the game down. It's television. Television slows the game down. Now, that's a catch-22 because on one hand, we're complaining about, hey, you know, there's too much television time being taken away from the game. And on the other hand, what do you think pays for a lot of this stuff? That's the problem. What do you think pays for a lot of this stuff? you got to have the television inventory to pay the television rates. And so is there going to be an adjustment here as far as the game flow, you know, what television is going to be able to do? That's going to be interesting to see. And I think baseball has been okay with it so far. And, again, I'm actually paying a little bit more attention to baseball on a nightly basis. You know, I'll listen a little bit longer because it's not longer of a game. I can invest a little bit more time and get to the, uh, get to the end a little quicker. Or if I'm going to watch a little bit of it on TV, I'm probably going to see more of the game because it's going by at a, a more um, acceptable pace maybe. And I get it. The pacing here is uh, it's preference, really. There are some people who want to go to a baseball game and just enjoy being at the game however long the game ends. I mean, really, th there is no clock in baseball. 27 outs. That's it, 27 outs. That's how you end the game, 27 outs. Football, I'm sure there are a lot of people who will respond to this and say, less football said no one ever. So you think this is going to have a major impact? I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to speed up the game just a little bit, and I'm sure coaches are going to have to adjust, and we're going to have a year. And I don't know if chain crews are going to be really – Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to take a shot at Marshall as far as the chain crews are concerned, as far as uh, slow or refs taking their time. I'm sure refs are going to have to take – a little bit more of a um, NFL approach to this. Get the ball spotted. Let's go. And the thing is, 
we're talking about the clock. We're not talking about the play clock. The play clock gets started when the ball is set. So it's not as if we're going to have the play clock change. We're talking about the game clock. So the, the game clock will continue, and then once the ball is set, the play clock resumes. That's my understanding. And I, I could be a little bit off on this, but my understanding is it's going to basically speed the game up. So this is going to allow the clock to run after first downs. It's going to, honestly, we're looking at maybe seven plays. That was the average when they tested this, about seven plays. Is that enough to be upset about, or is that going to be something that maybe helps speed the game along? I'm curious. So we'll open the text line up for you, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's our number to be a part of today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1. And AM 930. What do you think? Is this is this going to shorten games? Is that is that what is upsetting you that you're shorting yourself maybe 15, 20 minutes? Or are you thinking this is going to be just a, a comedy of errors? 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's the number to text in to today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I want to clarify a couple of the rule changes that the NCAA issued today. Let me go back to the penalties. According to the NCAA, penalties at the end of the first and third quarter will carry over and be enforced on the first play of the next quarter. So that's one adjustment. Also, teams will be prohibited from calling consecutive team timeouts. So that is another adjustment that the NCAA has made today to continue to, in its words, reduce breaks in the game. Now with the clock management under the new rule, the game clock is going to continue to run when a first down is gained. The game clock will be stopped when a first down is gained during the last two minutes Of either half, previously the game clock stopped and the first down was gained and the clock restarted when the offense was awarded a first down. So that is the change that we're going to see in the 23-24 academic year. So where do you stand on these rule changes? Is this going to be detrimental or is this just going to be a minor adjustment and you really, you won't notice it once it's in play? 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Some of the other clarifications here. Uh, the guidelines uh, are going to change. There um, they're going to be some new guidelines for second-half warm-up activities, including requiring teams to wait until the field is made available to return and having designated areas of the field to warm up. Also, when teams are on the field, drones – are not allowed over the playing surface or the team area. I'll read that again to you. When teams are on the field, drones are not allowed over the playing surface or the team area. And there's also the optional use of instant replay in games that do not have an instant replay booth official. This was tested Division Two last year. It was a pilot program. The model allows the referee to use available video to make decisions on reviewable plays after a coach challenge. So a challenge can be made. And if there's not an instant replay booth official, the referee is going to be able to use available video to make a decision. So those are some of the changes that are coming with the 23-24 academic year. Welcome into The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. For those of you just joining us, my name is Paul Swan. My text line is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Twitter, you can find me there, at Paul Swan. We're all excited for tomorrow's spring game, right? Green versus the black. Let me break this down for you. The green team is going to include Cam Fancher, wide receiver Caleb McMillan, offensive lineman Trent Holler, and defensive back uh, Jadarius Green-McKnight. The black team will have Rasheen Ali, 
Logan Osborne in center, defensive end Owen Porter, linebacker Eli Neal, and cornerback Micah Abraham. So those are some of the names that you know that will be on the differing squads tomorrow. There's going to be a, a mix. They're, they're going to try to mix it up is what they're telling us. They're, they're going to mix up the talent also. The game is going to feature two halves. It's going to be broken down into 12-minute quarters with a running clock. Broken down into 12-minute quarters, running clock. There will be a 20-minute halftime session, which is being described as an opportunity to have an interactive on-field fun, including, quote, the world's largest T-shirt toss. I don't know if we're gonna. I don't know if we're gonna set the the record here for that. The Guinness Book of World Records. I don't know if this is gonna make that, but it sounds like it's going to be. It's the world's largest T-shirt toss, so it's got to get in the record book, right? And it's gonna be an interesting day because we've got baseball and softball playing on the same day. Uh, the West Lot opens 10 a.m. for tailgating, and. Gates A and B will open to the public at 2.30 p.m. Tickets for the game, $5. Parking pass in the West Lot, $20. So I think that's pretty much what you need to know for this one here. I I think I've got everything covered for you. And, of course, as of right now, I know the question has been asked, is this going to go inside? Are they going to play this indoors? I don't think that's going to happen. I have yet to receive any indication that this is going to move or be prepared this could move. None of that. Instead, only indication I've got is uh, it looks like it's going to be played outside tomorrow. So uh, don't worry about that. Uh, We've we've sat in rain before, right? We've We've been in the stands in rain before. Some of us have. I think... I sat in the stands. This is like the 90s, early 90s. I think I was um, in the stands. I think it was a Marshall game beating down VMI, and it was a, a crazy, crazy rainstorm that came through. And I had my rain poncho, and I'm sitting right there watching the game. I was a student at Marshall at the time, so I don't know if I'd do that now. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know if I would do that now if I was sitting out in the stands of any game. But, yeah, I think we're going to be fine tomorrow. Ye of little faith, right? Cross our fingers. Should be good weather. Let's hope so. I know it's a little overcast today, but that's okay. We're going to be fine for tomorrow. The game, 4 o'clock. Uh, that will be uh, an opportunity for you to see the team before uh, we go into the uh, spring and summer months here and await football season. You can be a part of the program by texting 304-396-TALK, 304 396 8255 Already, for some herd fans, I'm sure um, a lot of people are taking advantage of tailgating now. The West Lot is open right now for tailgating, and there is a cornhole game at 6 o'clock at Edwards Stadium. So the herd's cornhole classic starting at 6 o'clock at Edwards Stadium. We'll update you on baseball when we continue. The Thundering Herd in action, taking on Georgia Southern. We'll get you the latest from that game, and we'll get your text and tweets in. Text line 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. On Twitter, you can find me at Paul Swan. We've got more coming up. Stick around. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 in AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We continue on with this edition of The Drive. It's ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Get you updated on baseball. We've been following that earlier. I told you that the Thundering Herd was down. Well, I don't know if Marshall is going to be able to dig itself out of the hole. It's right now top of the ninth. And Georgia Southern leads the Thundering Herd 16-4. to Marshall was able to put a run on the board in the bottom of the seventh. Georgia Southern has responded with a run in the top of the ninth. That's where we're at right now. Uh, There are no outs. 16-4, Thundering Herd losing to Georgia Southern. Marshall's going to have to have an amazing comeback here 
if it expects to win. Uh, the one thing I want to see from Marshall, I want to see a rally here. It doesn't have to be a complete comeback because I don't think the herd can do that, not at this point. But I would like to see at least a rally. Marshall's got nine hits right now, four runs, nine hits. Georgia Southern has 18 hits, 16 runs. I like to see at least the bats come alive a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting. I mean, stranger things have happened here, but that's what I want to see from the Thundering Herd. Just respond here in the bottom of the ninth after the uh, top is over. Respond to the bottom of the ninth. Put some offense on the board. Put some runs on the board. And get right back at it tomorrow. That's what I'm kind of looking for here in the next few minutes for the Thundering Herd. Um, we got two outs now, so we'll keep an eye on this. Hopefully this will be uh, over and we'll get to the final score before the end of the show. But at the same time, if Marshall can extend this, all the better. Speaking of baseball, we've got baseball action for you tonight here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. You want to listen to the Pirates take on the Reds? Well, here's the place. Pirates beat the Reds yesterday 4-3, to game two of the series tonight, 6.35 p.m. here on your home of the Pirates, ESPN, 94.1 and AM 930. So this should be a fun one here. Uh, so far, so good for the Pirates. Uh, they've had a, a really good run after the opening series with the Reds at Great American Ballpark. The Pirates have looked really good. I'm not used to this. Guardians open up a home series tonight, 7-10, against the Miami Marlins. And uh, just a baseball update for those of you uh, wanting to follow along. It's now uh, the middle of the ninth here. Uh, we're going to get to the bottom in the second. And Georgia Southern has um, a 16-4 lead over Marshall. Thundering Herd coming up to bat. NBA playoffs, uh, Cleveland at the Knicks, 8-30 tonight. Series tied, one game apiece. I'm a Knicks fan. Now, let me, let me walk this back a little bit here because uh, I've had several debates with a couple of people as far as how many teams can you root for? How many teams can you root for? I, I've always liked the Knicks and the Lakers. The Knicks just haven't given me much to root for. So I'm happy that the Knicks are winning and being successful. I'm still a Lakers fan. So I'm going to have to come to some sort of conclusion soon. Which one am I really pulling for here? You know, I'm not necessarily against LeBron James, but I've never been 100% a LeBron James fan. Same thing with Kobe. I was never 100% a Kobe fan. I think Kobe is one of the greatest of all time. I think LeBron's one of the greatest of all time. I was more of a Shaq fan during those early years. And before that, I was a, a Showtime Laker fan, but I always liked the Knicks, Patrick Ewing. I liked the Knicks. I lean towards the New York teams a little bit more. So uh, I'm I'm definitely rooting for the Knicks against the Cavaliers in this series. I know some of you are going to be upset with me. That's fine. You'll be all right. Um, the 76ers beat the Nets 102 to 97. Philadelphia leads that series three to none. Golden State beat Sacramento 114 to 97. The Kings are up two to one there, and the Suns beat the Clippers 129 to 124. Phoenix leads two to one. Last night, Stanley Cup playoff action. Las Vegas beat Winnipeg five to two, so that series is tied at one game apiece. Colorado beat Seattle. That series tied one game apiece. Now it was a three two victory yesterday. Toronto and the only blowout of the well, there were two blowouts. Toronto beat Tampa Bay seven to two. That series is tied at one game apiece. And last night, and I'll be careful, I don't want to get on a 30 minute diatribe here. The New York Rangers beat the New Jersey Devils five to one. Rangers lead two to nothing. Social media hates it when I don't talk about Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. I'm just going to say that right now. Social media hates it. Want to talk about things that I like that are not Marshall. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's our number to be a part of today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN, 94.1 and AM 
and AM 930 recapping our, our top topics today. The uh, NCAA Playing Rules Oversight Panel has approved football timing rules changes for Divisions 1 and 2 for the 23-24 academic year, which, uh, according to the NCAA, is uh, aiming to control game flow and encourage consistent game management. The adjustments include changes to the game clock, team timeouts, penalties, and instant replay. The NCAA said that it is expected to uh, modestly reduce the number of plays in the game. They're talking 7 to 10 plays. They're talking about 7 to 10 plays. So you get a first down, the clock doesn't stop unless we're in two minutes. So in the two-minute time frame, at the end of the first half and the second half, last two minutes of the first and last two minutes of the second, if you get a first down, the clock will stop. If it's in the rest of the game, you get a first down, clock continues. They're thinking it impacts seven to ten plays just with uh, just with the timing. I'm interested to see if that's really true, if that holds true. Are we going to see faster gameplay to compensate? Are we going to see less scoring opportunities? What are we going to see? That's what I'm really interested to see. But we won't know until next season because this is for the 23-24 academic season. And, of course, don't forget the spring game is coming up tomorrow. That is set for 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock at Jones C. Edwards Stadium. If you are heading out tomorrow, the tailgate lot opens at 10 a.m. So if you want to get there and, and tailgate tomorrow, 10 a.m. Now. Don't forget the fountain ceremony. The spring ceremony is coming up tomorrow. I believe that's at noon. So don't forget the, um, the spring ceremony tomorrow. Tailgating begins at uh, 10 a.m. So uh, it's going to uh, – they're going to open up lots, as I mentioned, 10 a.m. Um, and noon is the correct time. So fountain ceremony, don't forget that's coming up at noon. This is the ceremony to turn the fountain on as opposed to the fall ceremony that turns the fountain off. So this turns the fountain on, and that'll be at noon, followed by the game at 4 o'clock, tailgating at 10 a.m. So hopefully a lot of people will um, come out. It should be fun. We'll, um, we'll see you out there tomorrow on the West Lot. Don't forget, if you are going to the game, it's $5 to get into the game. Parking passes in the West Lot are going to cost you $20. And one other item, there's the uh, annual Choose a Seat season ticket promotion. That will be going on 2 p.m. at the stadium. So an opportunity for you to get your season tickets. If you haven't got those and you want those or, you know, you can, you know, choose your seat. Make some changes if you like. See what's available for you. Maybe you can upgrade your seat. Maybe you can change where you're sitting. So a lot of a lot of action taking place tomorrow. Don't forget softball and baseball as well. So we got a busy weekend. Got a busy weekend, and hopefully uh, this will turn out to be a fun time for a lot of herd fans. And then uh, Marshall will make it even bigger next year. I think that's the goal. Trying to make this a a big weekend just for a, sort of a I don't want to say an impromptu homecoming because a lot of people will be coming in tomorrow for the spring game. Maybe that normally um, you wouldn't see for a while. So. I know a lot of people try to make homecoming that annual event where if they can't get back on a regular basis, they come for homecoming. Maybe this is that second annual date that, hey, you know, if I can get back for a game, that's great. But, you know, I can get here for the spring game. That'll be fun as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of you on the West Lot tomorrow. Um, okay, not, not some of you, all of you. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you on the West Lot tomorrow. There's not a single person I'm not looking forward to seeing. So uh, we won't be on stage, by the way. There's uh, there's none of that stuff happening tomorrow. This is uh, this is the one time I can go to the game, and I don't have broadcast duties. So I can just go to the game. I can sit back, enjoy it, take it all in, go talk to Coach Huff. And see, that's different. I don't have broadcast duties, so I can actually go talk to Coach Huff tomorrow after the game. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, and we'll, uh, we'll recap everything on Monday, obviously. Uh, but the spring game coming up tomorrow, chance to see the thundering herd. Don't expect the playbook to be wide open. That's the, that's the one thing. I want to temper that with you a little bit. Don't expect to see uh, crazy formations. Don't expect to see anything outside of 
just good, basic football repetition plays. Nothing, nothing that you can use, right? Nothing that you can, you can scout the herd on. Because after all, the spring games are opportunities for the other teams to spy on the herd. That's what I at least I've heard. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Um, it's uh, It's been fun. Try to keep it light on Friday. We'll be back with you on Monday to do it all over again here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And don't forget, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Paul Swan. You can find the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And if you would, let me know how we're doing. Shoot me a message sometime. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. We'll, um, we'll look at it and uh, we'll take it all in. Have a great night, everyone, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at the Joan for the spring game. Until then, have a great rest of your evening, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington. This is your radio home for Pittsburgh Pirates baseball, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.